Hey everyone, welcome to another Outdoor Intrigue video. Today we're coming at you with a gear review of this pack right here, the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest. Now it comes in a few different sizes. The review is going to be applicable to all of them because it's the same pack, it's just bigger and smaller. The review is also going to be applicable to the other packs that Hyperlite Mountain Gear does that are almost exactly the same. Those are the Wind Rider and the Junction. The only difference being the Wind Rider pack uses mesh on all of the pockets on the outside as opposed to this solid Dyneema material that it uses on the southwest and the junction uses the solid material on the big back pocket whereas it uses mesh on the two side pockets otherwise the packs are almost identical so everything we're going to say is going to be true for those as well if you're looking at them. So let's jump into the facts on this pack. Hyperlite Mountain Gear are a US company and that's where they supply their packs from so if you're in the US you can pick it up for $320 if you're outside of the US, you're either going to have to import it and pay duties, fees, taxes, and shipping, which is going to push the price up, or you can try and find a local distributor depending on where you are. There aren't many in the UK, but if you can pick it up from a UK-based distributor, you'll be looking at paying around £240 most likely. The packs have a few different size options, the 2400, which I'm holding here, the 3400, and the 4400. The 4400 being 70 litres, the 3400 being 55 litres, and the 2400 being 40 litres. That is not including the additional pocket space on the outside. I think of those three, the most practical is this, the 2400. It's pretty huge, to be perfectly honest with you. A 40 litre pack is generally speaking for most people big enough for a few days while camping or even much longer trips. And because it's roll top, you can use quite a lot of room right to the limit, or you can roll it back down and pare it down when you don't need that space. So just be aware when you're buying it. When I originally bought my one, I went for the 3400 and pretty much straight away I was like, I love this pack, but it is probably way too big for what I need most of the time. That is going to depend on you though and how much gear you choose to carry. The next thing to call out is the weight. Now that's going to vary between which pack you choose, not only the 2400, 3400 or 4400 because they all vary in weight slightly. It's also going to depend which back size you choose. So they come in a few different sizes, small, medium and large, and you can choose those based on your own torso length. So when I bought my pack, I went for a large torso because I'm six foot two. This is Megan's pack that I'm actually holding here, and she's five foot six and a half, and she went for the medium torso. But on their site, they have a full description of how to measure that up, so you can choose the right option for you and make sure it's going to fit comfortably. But looking at weight, this one, the 2400 in a medium size, weighs in at 850 grams. My 3400 in size large weighed in at 960 grams. So you can see you're looking at under a kilogram, generally speaking, on any of the model options. And obviously the smaller you go, the lighter it's going to be, but it's, it's relatively small differences. The pack has some storage options on it, just to call them out. You've got a large front pocket here, you've got two side pockets, and then you've got the main roll top closure, which is just one large pocket inside, and it has a water bladder mesh pocket on the inside. There is also on the waist belt a pocket on each side, and that is really your storage on the pack as a whole. It has one ice axe loop, down at the bottom, it has a couple of different cinch cords so you can compress the volume, as well as a Y strap on top, so that not only can you compress the top, you can also store additional items like a sit mat or a wet tent or whatever you want up top and cinch it down with the Y strap. It uses a pretty simplistic carry system, so you've got your main straps, which are just a high density foam, they're pretty comfortable overall. It has one sternum strap, which runs across and you can cinch that. You can also move it up and down depending on where you want it to sit. The waist belt is pretty large and has high density foam again and one pocket on either side and then a join in the middle which you can cinch choosing how much you want it for your own size. The pack's back panel has a quarter inch solid foam on it so nothing's going to poke you through too easily from the inside of the pack and it has two aluminium stays which are removable which creates the kind of the frame structure system that also transfers some of the load onto your waist but you can take them out to save a small amount of weight if you want to do that. One of the things you're going to notice right up top with this pack is the fabric that's used to make it, which is traditionally known as Cuban fiber. Some people still call it that, or now DCF, which is Dyneema Composite Fabric. It's an extremely lightweight and strong fabric that was originally designed for use in yacht sails. It's now made its way over the last number of years into hiking gear because it works so well for creating things like packs and also shelters um, and basically what you're getting is a material which is very robust, waterproof, doesn't retain any water, and is extremely light for its wear resistance and its toughness. Now there's lots of different deniers of that fabric, so lots of different thicknesses, 
and the ones that they use in the Hyperlite Mountain Gear vary depending on which colour you choose. So if you choose the white pack, you get a 50 denier fabric. If you choose the black option, you get 150 denier fabric. Now I'm just going to call out to you that the white option is what I had and what Megan has. And I had my pack for a long time and used it a lot. And honestly, in the 50 denier, it's still a very solid fabric. It really is tough. So I wouldn't make your choice necessarily too much based on that, although the heavier denier will give you more longevity. So now that we've covered off some of those things up top, let's jump into what's good about this pack. So some of the really cool things about this pack are the weight for what it gives you in terms of carry capacity. So most packs that you're going to look at in this kind of sizing from 40 litres up to 70 litres, depending on which option you choose, are going to weigh a lot more than this pack. Because it uses Dyneema composite fabric and it uses a really minimalistic carry system with just aluminium stays, it does cut down on weight a hell of a lot compared to a lot of traditional packs, which is a huge factor. And if you're choosing a backpack, particularly for uh, overnight trips, it's going to be one of your biggest items and you're going to really want to cut down your weight as much as possible and this is a great way to do it. Now it cuts down weight but it doesn't cut down on comfort. Because it carries quite like a traditional backpack, it uses a frame system and it transfers the weight to your hips. So even when you load this thing up with up to 18 kilograms, which is the maximum recommended weight and I definitely wouldn't recommend carrying a lot more than that, less if possible, you're not going to have any issue with how it carries and you're going to find that overall the comfort's really good and it distributes the load really well. Obviously if you look at the models that are bigger than the 2400 they do have even more load capacity for weight carry but I think the optimum place to be for any load carry is somewhere around ideally 12 kilograms or less but you know it depends on what you want to take with you. It's also extremely durable for how heavy it is. So the pack is made really well. I mean, HMG really overbuild their gear. And when you buy one of these, you'll straight away notice how amazingly well built it is. The stitching is solid. The pack just feels like it's gonna last for years. And I had my one for years. I only sold it on in the end because I started moving more and more to frameless packs in general. So I had it for a very long time and it put a lot of wear on it. And genuinely, you could hardly tell, apart from the fact that it was white and that obviously picked up a bit of discoloration over time nothing else, no issues. One thing to call out on that is with Dyneema fabric, it can puncture. So if you've got sharp items, you do need to be slightly more careful. It's also got a really nice set of options in terms of pockets, even though it's a simplistic pack. It's not the most in terms of organization, but you've got two outside pockets, on e one on either side, and then the big one at the back, as well as your hip pocket. And they do a really cool range of accessories. We've got the pods that you can use for storage inside the pack from Hyperlite Mountain Gear, which really help with your organization. You've also got the option to add on a phone pocket, which we have done, which gives you that upfront carry for your phone. They do a couple of other items like the Versa waist belt, which you can also use as a chest carry. They do a camera pod. So they do a lot of the other options that you can spec this the way you want. On top of that, they do it in a lot of different sizes and a lot of different versions so that you can really try and find exactly what's best for you and your own usage and what's gonna give you the best fit as well. One of my personal favorite things about this pack on the positives is how waterproof it is because the material itself is waterproof and it uses a roll top so really you're looking at a pack that as it comes is essentially completely waterproof they also take the seams on these so it really doesn't have any issues when it comes to rain i used my one and megs has used hers in immense downpours hiking all day long in rain and had no water ingress into the pack whatsoever which is really cool because it means when you're packing things internally you don't have to worry about putting everything in waterproof bags. Obviously you can if you want to, but you can also use, you know, whatever sort of storage system you want and not have to worry so much about rain ingress. For me, that was always a really big win. And I really enjoyed having a pack that was naturally waterproof and not having to use a pack liner. It's something that just makes things even more simple for you. So I think really that covers off some of the main positives about this pack. It's light for how much you can carry. It's extremely tough. It carries well, the load transfers onto your hips well. It's comfortable to wear, there's not a huge amount of bounce or movement and it has a nice amount of pockets and a good set of accessories and a lot of options that you can choose from when you're buying it in terms of sizing and different variants. Now that we've talked about what's good, let's talk about what's bad about this pack. We've got to say it straight up top, haven't we? The price. I mean, it's not cheap. No matter what pack you're looking at on the market, this is definitely right in the premium range. It's a lot of money to spend on a backpack. And right along with that is availability. Now, if you live outside of the US, getting hold of one of these can be a bit tricky. 
And on top of that, it's likely gonna be even more expensive than what people in the US are paying. So you're looking at an already expensive pack being even more expensive. That said, you do get quite a lot for your money and it definitely will last. So it's a trade-off, but it is expensive, very expensive. Now, another negative is it doesn't have load lifters, which is essentially what attaches directly from your pack onto the straps normally, and you can cinch or loosen them to adjust how close the load sits to you and transfer the weight. It doesn't use those. So some people miss those, and I know Megan behind the camera found when she used this pack, it did kind of annoy her because she wanted to get an exact fit and load lifters sometimes help with that. I have to say though, personally, I didn't struggle with that as, as an issue because I found that it transferred the weight really well through the hip belt anyway. So that's gonna be something that's slightly more personal to you, just like the fit of most packs will be. So the price is a negative, no load lifters, that's a negative for sure. Organization, now I said that it's kind of nice because it's got these pockets on it and it's got the waist pockets as well, but it doesn't have a huge amount of organization like some other packs out there do. On the inside, there's almost nothing. It's just a mesh pocket which you can put a water bladder in, which personally I didn't like. I cut it out on my own pack and just chucked it away because I found it annoying. But it's got no brain, no lid on the top, which on a lot of packs gives you all that storage that you can quickly access things from the outside. On this pack, if it's not in one of your side pockets or in your front waist pockets, it's gonna be in the main body. And to get to that, you've got to unclip, completely unroll it, open the Velcro at the top, and reach into the body of your pack, which can be pretty annoying when you want to get something on the fly. So you have to really think about the way in which you're placing things so that things you want to access quickly are on the outside of your pack or up front, because otherwise it can be tricky. Just on that Velcro on the top, when you have a roll top pack, a lot of times they'll use a system to close them at the top. The most common one is Velcro, and it's also the most annoying one. It will grip onto a lot of materials. So when you're reaching into it, if you're wearing a fleece or anything like that, you'll end up being stuck to your backpack. It tries to grab things as you're putting them in or out. It can be pretty annoying and some people actually remove it. I prefer a, pe a press stud option like some brands use, but the Velcro is simple and it's durable. And to be honest, it gets less grabby over time. So that's kind of beneficial, I guess. Once it wears down a little bit, it's a little bit easier to manage. So let's bring this to a conclusion. What do we think of this pack? Well, it's pretty self-evident probably from what we said so far. It's a brilliant pack, it's well-made, high quality, carries well and it's waterproof, but it costs a hell of a lot of money and it's not always very accessible depending on where you live to get hold of one. If you're looking for a premium pack that uses a traditional carry system, but is nowhere near as heavy as a traditional backpack would be, then this is probably a brilliant option for you if you're willing to spend the money. If you're looking for a purely ultralight option because you wanna cut back on the weight you carry and you've already got a pretty light load, I would say look at frameless packs as well because there are some really good options out there. You have to be more conscientious in how you pack your backpack, but they do cut your weight even more. But it's a brilliant pack, highly recommend it. It's got a lot of longevity. If you buy one, it's probably gonna last you for years. I would have never sold mine to be honest if I didn't have so many damn backpacks. I can't even keep any more anymore. <laughs> At this point, I don't have any room. But otherwise, I would have definitely hung on to it because I think it's a brilliant option to have out there. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video and it's been useful. If you've got any questions, then just leave them in the comments below and we'll always come back to you as soon as we can. If you've enjoyed it, then like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram at Outdoor Intrigue. We're always posting new little bits and pieces and hopefully we'll see you out on the trails, guys. If you're ever in Scotland, hit us up. Take care.